Hello, you are listening to Skip Intro. I'm Lee Chui Lin. I'm joined as always by Ian McNally. Today, we're talking about this film. That they would accept me is as clear as my accepting them. We're talking about the worst rivalry that we have ever seen in our history. He is offering Malaysians a chance to write what was wrong. Ready? Able and willing. Yep, so as the culmination of our Malaysia Films Week, an informal thing that just kind of happened, uh, we're talking about M for Malaysia today. In the studios with us are the film's co-directors, Ineza Rusil and Dian Lee. Uh, thank you both so much for joining us. Hi, thank, thank you for, you having, for us. having us. Um, so to start us off, I guess, um, just take us from how it began and then tell us whether this is the film that you actually set up to make. I mean, like, I'm curious whether the thing that you thought you were making at the start is the film that you've put out at the end. Well, we didn't set out to make anything. <laughs> <laughs> there was zero pre-production on this film. Um, yeah, Dian just had the idea to document to document um, my granddad, and um, because there was no one following him around, mm -hmm. and then I got dragged in, and then we followed him um, for sixteen days yeah. on the campaign trail. Not really knowing what was going to happen, who was going to win, or what we were going to do with the footage. Because of course, um, you know the well the the idea the likelihood was that the other side were gonna stay in power. So then, what kind of film could we have made? Um, but then they won. Um, so so yeah. And then like a week later, we decided, oh my god, we we you know we had so much precious footage that we had to make it into a film, and so we did. So yes, to answer the question, <laughs> we completely <laughs> did not expect to to yeah. do this. Yeah, no plan at all. Yeah, I we we always have this joke that I'm the accidental producer, director, and Inezza is a reluctant one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> because um, she really didn't want to do this initially. <laughs> yeah. I took a lot of convincing. <laughs> yeah, I, I was surprised the actual director statement on the website is both like you know you talk about I think because it was a it's a different time you're working on a movie about the opposition you were like paying cash for cars mm -hmm. or like you know. Mm -hmm. covering yeah, no your tracks yes, as it was. Yes. and you basically said I didn't want to do this we don't agree on certain things yeah basically and yeah we had to take a lot of I mean we knew um, our well, crew we were and, being cautious yeah, yeah we had to take a lot of risks mm. you know, for our crew and everything so yeah <laughs> Was there much of a team then when you were shooting? So No, it was a tiny we had three cameras um, and a sound guy and that was it six of us yeah mm. and I guess um for me, I mean, the, the main thing that I was thinking about was, obviously, you have access to the subject of the documentary that yeah. perhaps not many other people would have had. Mm -hmm. um, there's also, um, there's also, I guess, a bit of unguardedness in it um, because, because of that proximity, right? Okay. So in filming it, what was that actually like to kind of have the camera be part of, you know, your family? Um, honestly, it was, it was a bit different I guess and weird because I don't usually have a camera between me and him right? yeah th that's what I was thinking yeah so I think one of the things I always get annoyed with myself and you'll hear in the f in the film I'm always like giggling in the back mm -hmm. or like you know I'm, like the camera shaking because yeah. I'm like trying not to have it right <laughs> yeah. yeah so in post-production that really annoyed me but um but yeah it was a bit weird but you know it got we got used to it after a bit <laughs> You just have to get on with it, basically. Yeah. Right? <laughs> was it difficult to, like, after you had all that footage assembled, then to go through it and to... I presume you did the interviews with the politicians and everything a little later, right, once you knew mm -hmm, what was going mm -hmm. on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Was it difficult to strike a balance between should we just keep it to, like, family home videos plus plus or should we actually try and, you know, go more document... Not documentary style, but more educational documentary style? Well, I think we knew that we have to put the we have to put it into context, right? Mm. We have to explain. Mm. Um, otherwise, you'd just be watching like 90 minutes of campaign, yeah. <laughs> yeah. which no one wants to do that, right? So we needed to explain why was it so meaningful? Why was May 9 so meaningful to everyone? So that's when we decided, okay, let's 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 do a list and, um, and try to interview um, the people that were involved. But at that time, we still don't have 
like a concrete script or a story because mm. I think documentary making it's is really quite different. It's mm. it's it's really you have to with the materials that you can find, not just with the footages that we have, um, including the interviews, um, and also the uh, um, what kind of archive footages that we can find to support the story. So I think you know the process actually took a few months and we had countless sleepless nights yeah. <laughs> and um, yeah. yeah so it, it to took a while the, yeah and then the narrative was probably the most the, difficult yeah. part and then like and how, I, how far back do we go because yeah. I mean you can start at Medeka if you wanted to right yeah. um, but considering the people we could interview and their backstories as well so we had like Guan Eng and uh, Datu Sri Wan Azizah and all that so we decided to talk about Ops Lang and Reformasi and ask them about their experiences and because re- reconciliation was such a big theme yeah. right of the whole um, election so we knew we wanted to kind of focus on that as well and in that context right like so how much context or how much backstory do you feel you need to give, say, a Malaysian compared to someone who hasn't really like experienced our politics the same way we have? You know, people who would be watching it from abroad, people who would have been interested in it because, because of the story, because of the fact that oh, sixty years, no one thought it could be done, and you know, as a more general interest thing, as opposed to yeah, Malaysians who would be pretty familiar with the things you were talking about. How did you balance that that storytelling of how much information to give? I mean, I think it also. The film's not just... I mean, we wanted the film to live on beyond, like, now, right? So we also wanted kids, you know, in 20 years to be able to watch it and be like, oh, this happened, this happened, this happened. And and also, we, you know, we took an account into uh, younger Malaysians now as well, who maybe, you know, it was their first time voting in in GE14, who might not have known about Ops Lalang or Reformasi and lived through that stuff. I mean, Ops Lalang was the year I was born. Like, I didn't see most of that stuff. So I thought, yeah, so it was, you know, important to kind of include those things, not just for uh, a foreign audience, but for Malaysians as well. There's a section in the movie when you're talking about Opsa Lang mm-hmm. and you have a discussion with your grandfather about the conversation starts to lead into that. And he's talking about, you know, people have complained in the past. Mm. Was there a lot more of that interview stuff? Because I was like very interested in what was going on there, but it seemed we had to move on to the rest of the film. <laughs> uh, no, because at the, during the campaign, we didn't even think of like, oh, we're going to go back Ops and, Lung, yeah. and talk about Ops Lung. Or But was it more like just it, it just having a chat, interviewing, or yeah, was it, it so just the, the campaign took off, you just had to follow? That was kind of the only plan we had in the campaign was that we were going to sit down with him every other day and ask him about what was happening, how he felt about it. Um, that was the only plan. Yeah. Yeah. The rest was... We just winged it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's, I think that's kind of a theme that's been yeah. running through. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I did want to know, I mean, like when you were thinking about campaigning, obviously the campaigning was happening on both sides, right? Mm. Um, so you have a very sort of first-hand view of one side of the campaign, but the, the film actually has elements of what was happening on the rallies or on the dramas or, you know, just on the other side of that. How did you find that? And also, how did you pick and choose what you were going to include? Because um, I think, of course, what you end up choosing tells a very... um tells a very specific story also of how Barisan National uh, was was kind of going about things. Mm. How did you guys make those decisions? Well, I think um, we... From, from the beginning, we decided that, you know, we want to be as honest as possible and 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 with the events that happen so the ca- the footages that we have it's 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 mainly um following tune so um actually after the when we were interviewing people i will not name the person we actually tried to um interview people from um the other side but uh, none of them accepted the invitation. Mm-hmm. So because also I think we recognize that as, as, as filmmakers, even though it's my first time, that you know we wanted to make this as objective as possible. So, yeah. And on that, at what point did Tun get to see the movie? Like, when it's done. When it's done. <laughs> he when it was done. Yeah, yeah. So he was like, he had no idea he was going to be sticking his tongue out on uh, big screens around the country. <laughs> I mean, I don't know if he remembered he did that. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, he was he. The only thing he ever asked us in the process was, "When can I see it?" <laughs> and yeah, I mean, I think we knew that we were only going to show it to him when it was done, and nothing else could nothing could be changed. Yeah. <laughs> um, but you know, he also got pretty busy. <laughs> how did he react Stuff when happened. he? Yeah, yeah. How did he react when he actually got to see it? I think he was 
happy. I mean, you know, he's not a man of many words, mm-hmm. but like, you know, he shook my hand, said congratulations, gave me a hug. So I was like, okay, I'll take that. <laughs> he, didn't have, he didn't have notes to provide. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> There's also some um, really, really cute uh, behind the scenes <laughs> stuff um, of of your grandma and granddad, you know, as a couple. And mm. it's really... It's it's lovely. Like it really softens um, it really softens somebody. I think who's otherwise seen as like this untouchable national icon. Um, and then there's also uh, I, I mean your grandma soundtracks some of the film, which mm. I thought was really lovely. Um, mm. How much personal stuff did you like? Personal in the sense that it's family. It's it's sort of about their relationships and the relationships that you all have with one another. How much of that stuff did you decide to show? And was that like a difficult decision to to figure out? Okay, you know. We need to pace it out a little bit, or you know, I, I don't think we want to. I don't think we want to show this. Well, I, I guess from the feedback from other, I, I mean, that stuff is like normal for me, right? I mm-hmm. see them like that all the time. Um, but from the feedback from other people, it was obvious that that kind of stuff is so precious, and mm. people love love those moments, um, especially because people have this very um, different idea of him, right? Um, yeah, so it was, uh, I think we wanted, I mean, it wasn't going to be the whole film, yeah. obviously. I but, think we yeah. added that and we tried to balance it out because I think we set out to, we wanted to make a, I mean, this is a political documentary, mm. but at the same time, this is also a human story. Mm. And I think that little moments um, actually humanizes the film. So so I think we that's, that's the intention that we have um, set out. And mm. hopefully, you know, we... I mean, as filmmakers, we feel that we have balanced it. Mm. But um, people... I mean, also have. it gives a breather, right? To all the, like, information, information, mm, information. Yeah. Mm. You just get a moment to, like... Yeah, just enjoy watching them. <laughs> <laughs> Did you think about going back and getting more interview, getting interviews with Anwar to put in retrospectively, or was that we always? We also tried to get an interview with him, but I think around that time was his by-election, so he was just so busy. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah, trying to get interviews with the politicians was, it not was easy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it was not because suddenly everyone is in office; they're trying yeah. to rebuild. They're trying to. Yeah. Everyone was really, really busy. So, but even that, I mean, we did interviews with like more than twenty people. Yeah. Only like a dozen of which we actually managed to put into the film. So, we, yeah, we still had a lot of a lot of stuff that we unfortunately didn't get to put in. Would you be doing anything with all that extra stuff? I don't know at the Not moment. Not in the near future. <laughs> 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 you know, when we were doing the interviews initially, we said like, yeah, we'll do a whole docu-series, like eight episodes, da 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 And now it's like, oh my God, that's going to be, <laughs> that's way too much. <laughs> um, one of the things that I was also thinking about was, um, as we approached May 9th, I, I actually got chills watching the film because I remember it there was just so much drama at the time. There was a lot of anticipation. Uh, on the day itself, there was a lot of like anxiety. So it was really interesting to see um, the people who were sort of really putting it on the line also experiencing that same feeling. Mm. Um, how much, I suppose, when you were putting it together in terms of editing, in terms of trying to tell that story, how much of the drama was already there? And how much of it did you sort of like, okay, let's... Because a lot of it, I felt, was... Um, there were moments where I felt like I was watching an action film, like with the rallies <laughs> and stuff, you know? And I was right. like, this is great. Um, so how much in terms of editing did you think about trying to capture mm. the feeling of the country, the feeling of people, you know, on that day at that time? I think the editing definitely played a role, but you know, it's this was real drama. Yeah, it yeah. really was. It was really We really just didn't real, have to manufacture yeah. any of that tension. It was yeah. just there. You just I happened mean, to be pointing the camera at it. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Especially at, because at the time we had no idea what was gonna happen, right? Yeah, especially I think for me, um, that night at Sheraton when, when we were waiting for the results, um, I remember this point whereby we started seeing um policemen with machine guns yeah. and mm. like I was scared, you know, we were, we were like, we were not, we were not sure what was happening. No one was saying anything. And it and says so much that our instinct is fear, right? Yeah. 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 So, I mean, you, you have that earlier as well when yeah. I was arrested in the documentary. And, yeah. it's like, mm. and I had no idea that actually had happened there at all. Until yeah. So, so that was real, you know, and, and, and we thought, like I said, you know, when we set out to do this, we want to be as, as, as real as we can with the documentary. Mm. Uh, so, and you worked with Los Angeles-based producer Render Zawawi for the music? Yes. 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 How was that process again? Was that just, here's the final movie, put some music to it? Or uh, was it no. working throughout? How much do we have done? I think we had like only a really rough cut when yeah, we yeah. first called yeah. him on. Mm. Uh, we had temp music. 
I think yeah. those temp music act um, as a um, really good guideline for mm-hmm. him. Mm. So then he could really interpret them really quite well and 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 execute the music beautifully and and we're really th- yeah quite happy that you know actually Rendro is really a, a real blessing uh, in this guy's I think our only brief to him was like make, make it, it local yeah, yeah make, make it, it local. sound local and then he came out with the brilliant idea of using the melodies of Nagaraku throughout the film yeah. and it just worked so beautifully yeah and 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 we also told him that you know we really wanted this to be cinematic mm. so on that when you had your footage you the election was won, you had an idea what you were doing. Was it like, we'll do it on Malaysia Day some year or we'll do it on Malaysia Day next year? And what was the process then of saying, we have this footage, we're getting it into cinemas? Well, well I think that was the goal. Yeah. Cinema was the goal. Um, when it would happen was still way up in the air. Yeah, but we also knew that, you know, we wanted to travel to film festivals because we mm. feel that this is this is a beautiful Malaysian story and mm-hmm. it needs to be told. The world needs to know, you know, yeah. like, you know, how we peacefully changed government after 61 years and um, how, you know, the power of the people came together. Mm. So um, when we first finished the film, we actually submitted um, to quite a few festivals and we got into a few and and... We sort of knew that we wanted to have it around Malaysia Day, so it all sort of fall into place. But you sought out a distributor that was just like, okay, fine, or <laughs> just because we've been talking to filmmakers all week, yeah. and some of them have been from like, well, I was sitting on this guy's couch and we started talking about something to mm-hmm. somebody providing money straight off the bat based on the script. So like, you don't have it's not quite the same idea, but like, for our listeners, how do you go from we have all this footage to we you have know, a production company involved? Actually, well, Astro is our, our Astro Show is our distributor, gotcha. and um, there was someone from Astro at uh, the hotel after swearing in <laughs> oh. who came up to my mom and was straight away like, "Are you recording you, this? You've been around with the camera. <laughs> I see it. <laughs> Give us a call." <laughs> so I think yeah, we we were pretty sorted on that front. Wow. But um, yeah, and now that we're speaking to you, it's already out. The film is out. Yeah. Um, how are you feeling, firstly? Because <laughs> it's a lot. And how was um, the premiere? Yeah, how are you feeling? How's the premiere? And I guess, what have people been saying to you? What has the, the feedback been like over, over the time, the very short time that the film has been out and viewed by the public? Well, my friends scolded me at the premiere. <laughs> they were like, you didn't tell me to bring tissue. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I think it, the feedback's been really positive so far. Um, yeah, I think it, I mean, so many people have, expectations of what it's supposed to be right and I think a lot of the time um, it's not what they expected so (laughs) I think I'm gonna take that as a positive and um, yeah and like Dian said people have been really emotional and I don't know it's been super nervous week (laughs) but so far so good and we hope you know it it stays going um, yeah because the cinema so because this is the first time that a Malaysian-made documentary is actually screening in uh, cinemas nationwide. So the cinemas are actually not sure how people would react. Hmm. So we, all, we are given four days. Um, so if it does well, hopefully, you know, Malaysians will support this and, you know, it can be extended and more locations will pop up and more Malaysians can watch this film. So guys, um, it's M for Malaysia that you'd be looking out or looking out for on your local cinema listings. Um, Ineza, Dian, thank you so much for coming by. Thank, thank you, you so for much, having us. Thank you. We've been speaking to the co-directors of M for Malaysia, Ineza Rusil and Dian Lee. Um, up next, well, we're, we're going to be talking about how we felt about the film. Um, I think some spoilers have already leaked in this interview, but um, <laughs> we'll, be, we'll be letting you know in, in full. Um, you're listening to Skip Intro, BFM 89.9. Because freedom matters. BFM 89.9. You're listening to Skip Intro with Lynn, Ian and Bahe. Um, earlier we heard from the co-directors of M for Malaysia, Ineza Rusil and uh, Dian Lee. And now we're going to talk a little bit about how we felt about the movie, which um, you guys go first. <laughs> I, I'm curious to know, what, what did you guys think? Uh, first... I was a little confused. Uh, I found that it didn't like set out its stall. And I like that in a documentary where it says not so much what we're trying to prove, but what we're trying to investigate or, you know, give something on what's going on. I know it's a crutch to rely on and the story doesn't need the narrator. But at first I was thinking, okay, is this actually about the election? 
Is it about because it's providing a lot of context about Malaysia and mm. about Absalang and mm. about Anwar and stuff? And I was like, well, what is this actually about? Right. But when it actually settled down into being a documentary about Tun Mahathir and the 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 election and his family, then I was totally on board because yeah. it was like there was a purpose then, and it actually just flowed a lot better for me then from that point. Yeah, I mean, for me, I was concerned. I was a little concerned that it was going to be a Tun Mahathir puff piece. You know, it's called M for Malaysia, yeah. and it was I think announced pretty soon after the election. So it was just this thing of like. It's. It feels like the thing, uh, uh, you know, less than reputable people would do. Of like, oh look at us, we've won. How Check great! Check cash are. in. Yeah, you know, I'm just like, and I was really hoping it wasn't that, and I'm glad that it wasn't that. Um, I think, I think you you mentioned it, Ian, that there was a point in the film where where it sort of goes from what feels like a very straight up documentary with talking heads to. What essentially feels a lot more like a like a fly on the wall kind of documentary, and it gets more personal. Yeah, it gets more personal as well. But I like both those sides. I was, I was in, I was quite hooked throughout the entire run. And I think it, in that sense, it was a very well done documentary. Yeah, um, I I think that it really sang when there was the personal stuff, and I mm. don't know if I'm just a sucker for that kind of like. For seeing a granddad, you know, yeah, because <laughs> think there's a big part of that. Yeah, right? seeing the grand the grandmother giving him a hug and saying, "Don't the cameras," and she's like, "I don't care if they see, let yeah, them see," yeah. and it's just it's your heart melts. So I really love that stuff. Um, I I agree that um, I actually think that the the first bit didn't clearly state what I mean. You you know, M for Malaysia is going to be about it. It kind of sets up the two opposing powers, I mm. suppose. Um, and, but I agree that I think it could have been a lot more... Is the word I'm looking for settled? I think it could have been more settled. I, I mm. feel like it starts to settle in at about the 10-minute yeah. mark yep. and then you're like, okay, all right, yep. let's go. Yep. Start the train. Yeah. And so that that really worked for me. Because it seems like it's going the personal route when uh, and the, the director Ineza brings up Ops La Lang. And they start talking, Dr. Hem, Dr. Hem, and he's talking about, well, back in my day, there was people complaints and they said I did something wrong. Mm-hmm. And I was like, this okay, this kind of personal collect connection is the content I'm here for. But then it cut away. And I was like, I don't need a, a Dr. Hem confessional, but it would have been interesting to see a little bit more of that. Yeah, and I, I, I'm, I understand what you're saying, but at the same time, as I, for me at least, uh, it feels like, uh, uh, an admission of that is enough. I, think. Yeah. I don't need to know. It just I seemed like he was standards. That's a lot. That's yeah. a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I just seemed like there was a conversation that was about to happen yeah. that we didn't quite get. And mm-hmm. the stuff they replaced it with was fine. I mean, when you see uh, Finance Minister Lim Guang Eng talking about being the first and la- first arrested and last, and the last released, released yeah. during uh, Ops La Lang, it's like you didn't expect to see that in yeah. this kind of yeah. documentary. And and it was also quite. It was interesting to see. I mean, prior to 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 the politics of it coming up of Bersatu, etc., and all that, to see these 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 characters of Malaysian politics, who are clearly on opposing sides, coming together, right? Mm. Um, like you said, uh, th- there's a lot of really heartfelt, true or not. I I, I leave up to you your cynical views, but the Oscar of, goes to no, but of just like. <laughs> Admissions, right? Of yeah. like, we cannot look past. We have to look to the future. We have to look at what's now. Um, I never asked for forgiveness. It was just nice to know that we can move forward. So yeah. a lot of that thing on one side feels a little maybe, if you're cynical, you think, oh, they're just doing that for the documentary. There's reporters constantly asking, like, are you friends now? Yeah, are you yeah. friends? Are you friends? It's like, oh, we're working together. Are you friends? So the thing is for me, right, is that um, it's important to view this documentary through, I feel, a very specific lens mm. uh, or through a few specific lenses, I suppose. Um, on the one hand, I got chills as we approached the election. Yeah. I, I just had chills and chills mm, because mm. I remember the day. Yeah. Um, I, I remember how long it took for the results to come out. I remember waiting and seeing um, it from inside is inside amazing. Inside the war room, yeah. 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 So, um, so on the one hand, just purely as a Malaysian who witnessed like a momentous day yeah. um, and, and who has now since I think a year and a bit on, I think had the usual like ups and downs that you would have with any government. Like to, to go back to that day was kind of a beautiful thing. So on that one level, really beautiful. Uh, on the other hand, seeing... Like you said, right? Like people who are really deeply fascinating to a lot of us, uh, people who have held our national attention for mm. a long time, and seeing them behind that was also great. The other thing, 
for me is knowing the family connection here. Yeah. And, mm. and I think knowing that up front and having that be be friend and centre, having, you know, someone, a, a granddaughter talking to a granddad, having um, Marina Mahade, executive mm. producing, <laughs> being yeah. in it also yeah. quite a bit. Um, I, I view this film in a very specific way. Like, I don't think it's meant to be a... Um, a completely unbiased, mm, uh, mm. you know, no, no, I have no personal stake in yeah, this. I have yeah. no stand in this. Yeah. I, I think you have to watch it with that lens because otherwise the cynical stuff yeah, starts yeah, to yeah, come yeah, up. Yeah. But if you accept that, like, yeah, this is this is mm. that side of the story, cool. But I think also it there's nothing, how would I put it? There's nothing strange about that, right? Yeah. It's this idea of like, if my father was going to do something momentous, I would have had a camera walking around with him. Yeah, the, there. there's an element of it being home videos plus yeah. plus and I think that was the, the tonal thing that caught me because if they just bought into that 100% and just actually don't need some of those interviews. Mm. I mean, they, they do establish context. We did watch the Malaysian copy. I think you said there's a little bit extra in the yep. international version supposedly mm. just to fill in the blanks. Yep. I actually probably would have been more engaged earlier if it literally was, now we're following my granddad around. This is what we're doing. And then right. see where we go from there. Mm. Like we didn't. Some of that context is like, okay, if you're not doing a histor- historical, you know, le- tra- training document or teaching document, you might as well just go full on side of the wall. You're right. doing a concert movie about GE14, yep, basically. Yep, yep. Just do that. You know, um, I I agree with that. I think it's what I want. I don't know if it's what I need. You know what they yeah. say yeah. about give people what they need, not what they want. Yeah. And like, um, what I would want is just like two hours of Donem sticking his tongue out and going, "Hey, you took a photo. Can yeah. I see that? Can I, Can I see, see that, that yeah. photo? That was great. Like, just yeah. being a granddad, yeah. being a husband, like that was so fantastic. Um, you know, seeing seeing his anxieties and his nerves, mm. um, and and how he you know, deals with yeah. that. I think it was all the more charming because it was peppered. Mm. Um, I wonder whether it would have been different if we, yeah, if we'd just been given like Mahathir family home videos. Behind the scenes access. Yeah. To, yeah. Um, I, I just, now I want that film, mm-hmm. but for the purposes of this movie, I really enjoyed the way the little bits of like softness were peppered mm. throughout the the harder bits. Because the, I think, yeah, and you're right, because the harder bits is what puts all this into context, right? It, what, and it puts into context why you're following this 93-year-old man who's yeah. who's not just peppering around the house, you know, feeding his fishes and... Aggressively. Aggressively. What, what a wrist <laughs> flick. That, that wrist <laughs> flick, man, is so angry at yeah. those fishes, man. But, and I, I like that, right? I like that, you know... That, that first day of campaigning, he did three speeches in the course of maybe yeah, two and a half, the three hours. Center and some of the business. Yeah, with so really diverse audiences. With yeah. really diverse yeah. audiences. And, and I think that was the point, right? Then to see him on the plane, his wife just is, is asleep on the plane and he's going through a speech. Mm. He's just going at it 112 like, miles an hour and he's 93. I, and, and then double that with the sweet moments of, mm. of Tun with, with, the, with the wife hugging in the <laughs> bedroom and, and, and him saying like, no, no, there's a camera here. We don't do that in front of the camera. I want them to I see. I want them exactly. to see. It was so great. Yeah. The wives are the secret MVPs of this, can yeah. I just say? Yeah. Because mm-hmm. like, um, we haven't mentioned um, that Street Dr. Wan Aziza and she actually has one of those moments where my heart stopped. Um, yeah. One part of her interview, I just thought, oof, yeah. like that, you know. You um, just made of iron woman you yeah like, just, i don't yeah. know and i like the ending of the documentary being at that moment of him taking the the oath right mm. i like how i like that that decision from the directors i think it's a beautiful decision to sit with marina mahade outside with yeah. the people as well, opposed to in. showing that fo- <laughs> no but i think if they could have taken the footage of tv2 they could mm. have taken it off aishra wani but that was not the point the point was the people were happy the people were happy and his daughter was crying. His and daughter was yeah. crying. Yeah, it was a beautiful touch. I think that was such a masterstroke for me. So we've been talking today about M for Malaysia. Earlier we spoke to its co-directors, the film's co-directors, Ineza Rusil and Dian Lee. Um, and you've just heard what we thought. I also just think it's Malaysia Day, you guys. It's Malaysia Day weekend. Go watch this film. It's going to make you feel... Gonna, it's going to give you that nice feeling in your chest. Um, it is uh, it is already screening. It's in selected movie theatres nationwide. Um, you can find it. Uh, basically, just check out your listings. I think there's probably going to be one near you. Um, and if you are planning to watch it, once you have watched it, let us know what you think. You can WhatsApp us at 018-789-8899. You can tweet us at SkipIntroMY. And you can write us at movies at bfm.my. 